something you're trying to tell us. Something wasn't right in that house. I prayed it was another nightmare. It was a really, really bad idea. It's like an only child's worst nightmare. I'm gonna give you three seconds. One. Two. I knew I had to get out of that house. When I was 15, my whole life changed. I know you're upset. I know you don't want to live here. My mom died suddenly. You know, your stepmother's not, not that bad. I was shipped off to live with my dad and his new family over a thousand miles away. It's like an only child's worst nightmare. My stepfather's 16-year-old daughter was moving in with us. Evelyn. Evelyn. Come meet your stepsister. I wasn't happy, and I'm sure I didn't hide it. Hi, I'm Robin. I understood how Evelyn felt. I wasn't exactly excited to be there either. Evelyn, why don't you take Robin up and show her her new room? Maybe show her around just a little bit? I couldn't imagine us having anything in common. Fine. I'll see you in a little bit, sweetheart. Maria was hardcore religious. I counted five crosses and three angels between the front door and my bedroom door. So, this is your room? It's your bed, whatever, uh, bathrooms down the hall. Thank you. Evelyn was a sweetheart compared to her mother. Mom's really clean and stuff, so don't leave stuff laying around. Have your bag here for you. Just wanted to go over some rules. Keep everything very clean around here. Cleanliness is next to godliness. My stepmother, she was a pretty nasty person and a complete control freak, but it was her house, so it was her rules. Is that from your mom? Yep. Let me know if you need anything. I felt completely alone. Maybe it was the emotions I was going through at the time, or the fact that I knew that nobody wanted me there. But the house had a strange feeling about it, a really deep, permanent sadness. You just felt it. Evelyn and I shared a bathroom. It was the first night I was there, and we were getting ready for bed. It looked like a drop of blood coming out of the faucet. I could tell by the look on Evelyn's face that this wasn't something normal that went on in their house. I think she somehow figured it was my fault. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is, the big moment we've been waiting for. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Robin's 16th birthday and the crowd goes wild. When my 16th birthday rolled around, 
My dad tried really hard to make it special. It's a pony! No, wait! It's just birthday cake! Robin was new in town, and she wasn't very social, so she hadn't made any friends yet. Yeah, take some pictures. So her party was just the four of us. Close your eyes. Make a big, big wish. What was I wishing for? That I had my mom back. What's with the line? I don't know. Keep going. Try it again. All right, big wish. Every circuit in the house blew at the exact same time. The power sound. Every light, every clock, and every appliance. Somebody needs to go to the fuse box. Can we grab something? I'll go. All right, Evelyn, thank you. I knew I couldn't find a flashlight in the dark house. So I figured I'd just use my camera flash to light my way to the fuse box outside the garage. I saw her for just a split second. It, it looked just like Robin, but it wasn't Robin. It sounds crazy now, but I know what I saw. Robin? Robin, where's Robin? Stop yelling. She comes back in the house screaming at me. Why, why are you yelling? I had no idea what she was talking about. Who the hell do you think you are? Why would you do that? I knew it didn't make any sense. I mean, how could she get inside so fast? And her face was so different. But at the time, I guess I just needed to blame someone for whatever it was I saw. I saw you! Okay, show me! Prove yeah, it! Look. Are you kidding me? Look! There's nothing there. Nice try. Dad, I'm not even there. How is this possible? I saw her. I took a picture of her, whoever it was. But there was no one there. I swear to God you were there. Your face, you had a mask you on! Thanks for ruining my birthday. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to bed. Robin, don't I can't stay on. here anymore. That's great. Thanks, Ev. I just wanted a few minutes by myself. So I thought, I'll take a bath, and I'll go straight to bed. And I just really wanted to pretend that I was alone and make them all disappear for a moment. I thought it was Evelyn screwing around with me. Very funny, Evelyn. Knock it off, you perv. I'm gonna give you three seconds. One. Two. Every time I grab for the side, I get pulled back under. It's like a hand holding my head, trying to keep me there and hold me under the water. What is your... My mom's gonna kill you.
something had exploded all over the mirror. And I was wondering what the hell could do something like that. My mom's gonna kill you. We were both really scared. In a way, it, it sort of brought us together. We just wanted to know what was going on. So we did what any 16-year-old girls would do. Evelyn called them the death dice. I wrote yes and no on one. And then on the other, I wrote things like illness and death and uh, wealth and happiness. It was a really, really bad idea. You sure? Are there any spirits in the house? Yes. Is there something that you're trying to tell us? Yes. What are you trying to tell us? in a row. I looked it up. The odds are 46,000 to one. Girls, what is going on? What is all of this? Robin. Why are all of my candles out? What are those dice? That says death on that? Maria was freaking out. This is exactly what I'm talking about, Ron. I can't have her in this house anymore. I mean, she has been nothing but trouble. You her. can't have her in this house no, anymore. What, no, the, what is that supposed to mean? She's evil. She has brought evil into her. Later that night, they must have thought I was asleep upstairs. What do you mean, evil? I am scared for my life. I am scared for my daughter's life. Nothing has gone right in this house since she has walked in this door, okay? Oh, please, you yes. haven't gone right yes. since the minute we pulled oh, up in the driveway. Stop at you me. haven't liked anything that we've done ever since we got home. I'm looking through a crack in their bedroom door, and I notice something on the floor. It was the locket that my mother gave me. And I'm thinking to myself, how did it get there? What are you doing? This is a private conversation. I hated being there. I just wanted to leave. But I had nowhere else to go. After the choking incident, my, my mom changed. She got totally paranoid and she stayed away from Robin. See it myself. My mom told me that story probably about a hundred times. She blamed Robin for stacking the stools, but she wasn't even in the house at the time. After that, she started putting those nanny cams all over the house, videotaping everything that went on there.
things quieted down for a little while. One night, Evelyn and I stayed up late watching some old movie. I never felt a thing. But I used to get up in the middle of the night and watch the tapes. I thought deep down, maybe I'm causing whatever's going on. And I just wanted to know first. I replayed that tape at least 20 times. You can't imagine the terror when you see yourself like that. I mean, why was this happening to me? Who was doing it? Was I possessed? I erased the tape. And I never told anyone. You must be Robin. I felt really helpless. So I waited till everybody left the house and I called a medium that I found in a phone book. We're surrounded by the strong feminine. Your mother is here. I never told her my mother was dead. My mother would never hurt me. No, she doesn't want to harm you. She's here to protect you. Protect me from what? This is not an outside spirit. This is someone inside the house. Have you ever heard of a poltergeist? She told me that a poltergeist is a destructive entity created by a living person. And they usually don't even realize they're doing it. It's like all your pent-up energy that form into this thing someone inside the that can manipulate objects. It can make people see things and even hurt or kill another person. It's drawn to you. Am I not safe? She told me that my mother had already made her presence known as some kind of warning to whoever was trying to hurt me. And that's when I knew it was Maria. We all went to bed late that night. Marie and Dad were still fighting. So he slept on the couch. The house felt different. I was terrified from what the medium had told me. But she also said that my mother would find a way to protect me, so I just needed to trust that. It was really strange. For the first time since my mother died, I actually felt her presence around me. And it sounds crazy, but I swear I smelled her perfume. It was probably the best sleep I had since I got there. Every day for years, my mom would tell me the story of what happened that night. Evelyn, get in the car. Why, Just mom? Just get in the car. <sighs> I 
Eventually, it became all she would talk about. You don't need to understand it right now. Just stay quiet. These days, she forgets my name a lot or that I'm her daughter, but she never forgets a single detail of what happened that night. When I was a baby, my American mother abandoned me and my Canadian father, so I was raised by my father. I had a good life, but my father never spoke my mother's name. He refused to tell me anything about her. Then he died 10 years ago, and he left me knowing nothing about my mother, not even how to find her, nothing. Then about four years later, a lawyer from California called me and told me my mother died. So legally, I was her only living relative and the house was mine. I didn't ask how she died. I didn't care. All my life, I tried to imagine what my mother looked like, what her house looked like, what clothes she would wear. All those answers were somewhere inside this house. I guess I was exhausted by the bus ride, so I fell asleep for a little while, and I had this dream I've had all my life. My mother is in the backyard of her house, and she turns to me and she has no face. After all these years, I finally had a chance to see my mother's face. I went through the entire house, every drawer, every shelf, and I couldn't find a single photograph of her or of anybody else. I did have some cheap costume jewelry that I thought I could wear and some clothes that I thought might fit me. It was just uh, an old stupid radio, but I knew something wasn't right in that house. Yeah, I know, but you were supposed to come over. That's what you said. Yes, yes, you did say that. My boyfriend, David, uh, lived in Montreal no, that's not and we had been together for three years and we had planned to get married. Yeah, well, I'm still waiting. He was going to meet me in California in a week. Then we would decide whether to sell the house or keep it and move in it permanently. Well, it'd be nice to have a little emotional support sometimes. I'm just... We had spent lots of time apart, but as soon as I got into that house, I became angry about everything. I I just couldn't help myself. We were on the phone arguing again. Hold on, I hear something. And I swear, there was something in the yard. I think there's somebody here. No, I'm not paranoid. Why do you assume I'm paranoid? 
I'm just telling you. Yeah. My heart was pounding so loud I could hear it in my ears. Just get here. I had traveled all over the world, but I had never felt this paranoid before. It was like there was always someone standing behind me. I had two glasses of wine to try to calm myself down, and I checked all the locks again and again. I felt like I was going to jump out of my own skin. I was concentrating on trying to get the wine out when I glanced up at the mirror. My eyes were black. I thought I had just imagined it, but I was terrified to open my eyes again. They were fine. I told myself that the wine was bad. There was definitely a face in the window. When I went outside, no one there. I couldn't sleep, so I decided to take a bath. It was the first time since I got here that I felt a little like myself. was completely filled with blood. I covered my face with a towel. I was completely terrified to look. But when I did, the water was clear again. I convinced myself it was just a terrible nightmare. I stopped taking baths after that. Just get here. My boyfriend wasn't supposed to arrive until the end of the week. I had become completely irrational. I knew I was acting like a crazy person, but I couldn't help myself. I was terrified of that house, but for some strange reason, I was even more afraid to leave. I just can't explain it. You're having fun wherever you're at? I'm going crazy. It was like... I was suddenly descending into this uh, dark, bottomless hole for no reason. <laughs> Shut up! I never felt anything like it. I was having these terrible thoughts like I've never had before. I remember thinking, so this is what insanity feels like. I stared at the broken pieces of the bottle on the ground and I suddenly felt like I wanted to feel the jagged glass in my hand. I needed to feel it against my wrist. Then a voice in my head said, do it and it will all go away.
making myself drop that piece of glass was the hardest thing I think I've ever done. I had never had a suicidal thought in my life until I moved into that house. I knew I had to get out of that house, even for one night. I didn't know where to go, maybe a hotel, but I forced myself to pack. And that's when I found this big duffel bag. I could feel that it was cold inside. friends die from drug overdoses. Except this time, it was my face I was looking at. I prayed it was another nightmare, but I knew it wasn't. What was happening to me? Did I lose my mind? Was I already dead? Then I felt the strange calmness come over me. And then I heard this... It sounded like a gunshot from inside the bedroom. There I was again. This time with a bullet hole in my head. And that's when I thought I understood what was happening. Someone or something was trying to drive me to kill myself. And it never even occurred to me that whatever it was, it was inside my house. I stopped answering David's calls. I knew he would worry. But I knew I sounded crazy, and I hated myself for it. For a moment, I thought about committing myself. But how do you even do that? Do you go to the hospital and say, I keep seeing myself dead? Can I stay here? Then I noticed something under the couch. There was this folder. It was from an insane asylum or something. October 12th, 1979. Sophie Durand, my mother. Multiple suicide attempts. Electroshock administered requires constant supervision. Released to the care of Eleanor Wolf, her neighbor. I knew that mental illness can run in families. So did that explain what was happening to me? Was my mother also normal one day and suicidal the next? But one thing still didn't make sense to me. I did not want to die. I thought it was me, but I'd never seen it before. It was Eleanor, my mother's caretaker, before she died. You look exactly like her. She was a strange woman. 
How did she die? <sighs> My mother cut her own throat. I only stepped out for a moment. Just a moment. That's when it all made sense to me. I wasn't seeing my suicide. I was seeing my mother's, all her attempts to kill herself. She was somehow stuck, trying over and over to end her life. Because my mother didn't know she was already dead. Eleonora went home, and I was still trying to process everything she told me about my mother's suicide. I was relieved to know I wasn't crazy, but what was really happening in that house was almost more horrible. I thought it might be Eleanor again, so I went outside. But there was no one I could see. was my mother hanging right in front of me. My entire life, I hated my mother for leaving me. But killing herself over and over again was worse than any punishment I could ever imagine. I thought about just leaving the house, but I was afraid of leaving her like this, reliving her own suicide attempts forever. I had to try to release her. She was my mother. Eleanor told me that people who commit suicide can be so confused at their moment of death that they might not know they're dead. They sort of get stuck in what she called their death state. They become locked to the same time and place, the same agony, sometimes forever. Then she told me about something called mirror gazing. Sophie? Sophie, it's your girl. Some people believe that mirrors can be portals between the worlds of the living and the dead. And the living and the dead can communicate through these passageways. Sophie? Sophie? I thought that if my mother could see me, could see that we are two different people, and could hear me say to her that she's dead, then maybe she could move on to wherever she had to go. We were just about to give up. I was staring into the mirror, hoping for some sign from her. Glass flew across the room. I couldn't move. I thought all the bottles were gonna shatter. There she was. I saw her for a split second. Mom? And she disappeared. And then... Everything stopped, and it was completely quiet. I'm not sure what we did, but I hope we released her. Really 